So, Tom, let's start getting into the specifics here of, of objections that either I have or I hear that our audience has. All right. Okay. And I want to start with the biggest objection I have right from the top so we can address it for sure. Because some of what Ron Paul has said and done on the, on the social issues, I can work my way around those because of everything you just said in the last segment. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can work my way around those. Okay. Okay. All right. And and I also believe that the vast majority of depravity in the culture would go away if the welfare state went away, because most of it is publicly funded in some way, shape, or form. Anyway. I agree. All right. Here's the issue, though. The first role of a president is commander in chief, and maybe the first objection I hear from most people of faith about Ron Paul is on foreign policy. And it, it's not so much the idea of why are we still wasting resources in Afghanistan when after ten years there, there's not a single public Christian church that is open according to the State Department. What is the point of what we're doing there? All right, But it is the idea of, like this article uh, from Politico this week, um, GOP presidential hopeful Ron Paul says offering friendship to Iran, not sanctions, would be, a more fruit, would be more fruitful to achieving peace. When asked on Fox News Sunday what he would do to deter Iran's alleged nuclear ambitions, Paul said, quote, maybe offering friendship to them, unquote. Uh, and, and there's a lot of people that are listening to this. In their mind, Iran, 2011, is what Nazi Germany was, 2000, 1936, 1937. And that the idea, in, in the benefit of hindsight, of befriending Hitler is, is as absurd as the idea of befriending the guy in Iran whose name I can't really still pronounce. So that's an objection I hear a lot, or this idea that you know Iran's nuclear program is blown out of proportion, and it's not really a big deal if they want nukes. As he said in the debate in Iowa, hey, if I was Iran, I'd, I'd want nuclear weapons as well. That, that really gave a lot of people of faith that I know cause for, par, or, or cause for pause. How would you respond to that? Well, I would say that if we really are people of faith, sometimes we have to just challenge not just other people, but even challenge ourselves and even sometimes challenge our own preconceptions, no matter how right we may feel about them. Sometimes, at, at, every once in a while you have to hang a question mark on things that you have long come to believe. Now, in terms of, of Iran, I, I do believe that the stories that we're getting about their nuclear program, I do think they're exaggerated. I have an article on my site, TomWoods.com, that basically says this is a non-event, this report. It's all well, I once heard one guy say, and maybe this and that. I mean, it's the usual sort of doublespeak that we've been getting from the foreign policy establishment for a long time. Now, Iran has been involved in kind of a cold war with the U.S. for about 32 years. And presumably, uh, given that they've had covert operations going on in their country, they've had uh, U.S. ships in the Persian Gulf, they've had wars going on on either side of them, and they've seen that North Korea doesn't get uh, invaded, and Libya got invaded as soon as Gaddafi gave up on his weapons of mass destruction, well, at least you can understand the sense in which he meant that remark in the debate, that if they were pursuing a nuclear weapon, which, as I say, it, I think there's good reason to believe is doubtful, they're only doing exactly what the U.S. leadership would do in their shoes. Now, having said that, I would say that we have to we have to also not listen to the caricatured views of what's, coming, what's going on in, in Iran. Ahmadinejad is not in charge of Iran. He's not even the second in charge of Iran. He's about the 14th in charge, because first you have the supreme leader, and then you have the, the, uh, the, gen, the uh, general council, the supreme, the supreme general council, uh, and then you have Ahmadinejad, who is kind of an embarrassment to everybody, and the only reason, frankly, that he's anybody is that he's such a lightning rod and everybody spends so much time paying attention to him. But he has next to no, no power. And when we look at Iran, we look at they were invaded by Iraq in the 1980s. They had chemical weapons used against them all during that war, or for a long time during that war. And the leadership, the civilian leadership, even though the military was saying, we can weaponize chemicals too, let's go ahead and do this. The Iranian leadership said, no, that is immoral, we simply can't do this. So my point is that if you look in Iran, if you travel, which unfortunately most Americans don't, they just think Iranians are a bunch of stupid towel heads and all they want to do is, is, is kill Americans, you would actually find a lot of pro-American people there, a lot of just regular people pursuing their livelihoods. And 
any war that would be necessary for this would kill so many innocent people that we have to exhaust all alternatives, and I don't think we've even started that. And as Christians, we're obligated to do this even with our enemies whom we are supposed to love. 